It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. Here in Redmond, we're visited by some of the smartest people on the planet, pretty much every day. Every chance I get, I meet up with them for lunch. In this episode, I wrap up my in-depth conversation with Terry Meyerson, Executive Vice President of the Windows and Devices Group. We were talking yesterday and you were you were describing how you see the role of the CIO really change into one who focuses on the culture of creativity and and teamwork in an organization. Well, certainly the modern workplace CIOs yeah. for sure. I yeah, think those who are kind of ahead of the game and thinking about it. I, I think I think it's gonna be all about that culture. It's gonna be all about you got millennials entering the workforce with different expectations than uh, you know, I guess we're not millennials, huh? <laughs> we uh, try to be. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they have different expectations than people that have been in the workforce for 20 years, uh, different tools, but you want everyone to work together. That, to me, that's a, a cultural question of how you want your company to work. Uh, you were one of the pioneers on taking us to the cloud. I mean, go back to when we were working together, when you were running Exchange yeah. and you know, I was running System Center. Uh, you know, you, you saw this opportunity, this vision to take exchange to the cloud, and that's really kind of the foundation of what became Office 365. What were you seeing then that led you to say, hey, we need to go deliver this as a cloud service? That was that was very early. Well, what happened there was some amazing customers, you know, the scale of what they wanted to do with exchange, the number of devices they wanted to support, number of uh, remote sites they wanted to support, uh, the amount of storage they wanted to manage on behalf of those users, and then compliance came in. It was complex. And... Uh, it got to this place where there were just repeatable patterns across customers and just got to this place where some, especially with medium-sized businesses, there was this sort of, you know, customers in this 500 to a couple thousand seats. They weren't able to hire big teams with the expertise. It was like, let us do it for you. We did get started with the, you know, this few customers and then it was about learning, about listening and learning and then understanding what it would take so that we could offer the same capabilities to customers all over the world. And now you look at that, and that really has been the foundation that Office 365 was built on, which is the most commonly used cloud service in yeah. the enterprise period. I mean, it's amazing. It's, yeah, and then you did something similar when you took over Windows. I can remember hearing you for the first time describing delivering Windows as a service, you know? So what patterns yeah. were you seeing there? I think it's the same pattern of you're, you're listening to customers, and you're looking for where the challenges we're having in terms of serving these customers best. In the case of Windows, we were on a three-year release cycle, and we had this disconnect where customers were asking for, they wanted to have more influence over the, more transparency, more an open development model, but they also just wanted to be able to get bite-sized value. And, you know, it's quite a challenge, because Windows is an enormous code base. Oh, uh, it's it might be the single biggest software project in the world. Of course, we don't know the size of every other software project, but it's certainly the biggest software project we have at Microsoft and that we know of. And the, so thinking about how do we now develop it more incrementally such that we can still go after these bold and ambitious goals, but then also deliver it, you know, what's now twice a year, allows us to have this you know, ability to listen, learn, react to what customers want. And I think as we look at kind of like the history of, of the software industry, I think what you guys pulled off in a single release really is is, <laughs> is, is is one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen done in software. Well, I mean, that's nice to say, but we, we build on top of the work done before us in all cases. You know, the, if you look back in Windows history, Windows 7 was a fantastic release that built on some great work in Windows Vista that didn't land very well. And I think we'll look back on Windows 10 and say, it really did build on some great work in Windows 8, uh, which, you know, we didn't land as well as we would have liked. You know, these big platform releases with hundreds and hundreds and millions of lines of code, you got backward compatibility, you got security, you got everyone from militaries around the world to consumers, depending on the work. And what were the things as you set that vision out that gave you the most trepidation as, as the leader in, in fundamentally changing how <laughs> Windows, I mean, what were the things that gave you the most concern? The biggest challenge is always the ecosystem. You know, with Windows, you're not building a product. You're, yeah. bu you're building an ingredient that really encompasses the work of so many companies. Well, you know, we should make this like a regular occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. <laughs> See you around. Thanks, Terry. There are a lot of cameras in here. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks, Terry. Next time on Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. 
How much seniority do you need at ABI in order to ride one of the Clydesdales? <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about technology, let's yeah. talk about capabilities. And that really helps you get that seat at the table and then you can use that to innovate.